Today we're taking a look over the data sheet for the new and bigger Black Templars. Let's see what the Primaris Crusader squad can do in game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're talking Black Templars, and in particular about the shiny and new Black Templar Primaris Crusader squad that's recently been released for the faction. In today's video, we'll take a look over the datasheet itself, talk about any obvious combos and synergies for the unit, and how I think about making use of them in game. I think it's really quite fun that we're starting to see some of the unique chapters for Space Marines get reimagined in Primaris form. Should certainly be interesting to see what sort of similar options armies like Blood Angels and Space Wolves get. In any case, let's take a look at the data sheet and see what these initiates and neophytes can do. So the Primaris Crusader squad is a troop's choice for Codex Space Marines, only available to the Black Templars, and kind of interestingly, you have to take them in fairly meaty blocks, you can have between 10 and 20 models in the unit, as opposed to the more normal 5 to 10 per Space Marine squads. The unit consists of one Sword Brother, between 5 and 11 initiates, and between 4 and 8 neophytes, so basically your standard squad is going to consist of 6 power armoured space marines and 4 in the more scout style carapace armour. The sword brother and the initiates all cost 19 points per model and the neophytes each cost 16. That means the base squad is usually going to cost 183 points when you take into account that the sword brother must take a power sword. Stat line wise the initiates are basically intercessors, space marines with 2 wounds and 2 attacks and their power armour. As per normal the sword brother is the equivalent of a sergeant, 3 attacks and leadership 8. The Neophyte's profile is really quite interesting, kind of a halfway between standard Space Marines and Scouts. Like other Primaris Marines, they do get 2 wounds and 2 attacks, but they're only leadership 6, and their carapace armour only gives them a 4 plus save. I think it's kind of interesting that there'll be a slightly cheaper model that can equally tank a really big heavy hit, something like a Dark Lance shot or something. But if they do manage to make it into combat, they should hit just as hard as their other Battle Brothers, at least when they're armed with chain swords, as opposed to their ranged weapons, which are a bit worse. I think that having multiple defensive profiles within the unit is one of the things that helps sell it, in addition to its big size. War gear wise, the initiates can either essentially be assault intercessors, taking heavy bolt pistol and chainsword, or take an auto bolt rifle for plus one point, though they can't take the other two bolt rifles from the intercessor squad, so no stalkers or standard pattern ones, maybe not the worst as the auto is probably the best of the three right now. The neophytes can be equipped relatively similar to Space Marine Scouts, they can have either a standard Astartes shotgun or a standard bolter, but they get to be significantly superior to scouts in melee, getting Astartes chainsword and bolt pistol for an extra AP-1 that scouts don't get. I think if I was taking big units of these guys, I'd be most tempted to go fairly heavy on the melee side, maybe just take all chainswords, and you could have something that functions at least fairly similarly to an assault intercessor squad, but you get to save a fair few points on a fair few models, despite them basically having the same damage output. I feel like with ranged damage you might be just a bit better off with standard intercessors who could do things like rapid fire for a couple of command points, or take different bolt rifles if desired. The sword brother, as we mentioned, must take a power sword or a power axe for plus 5 points. Unfortunately they don't get any options for trading out for other powerful combat weapons, no power fists or thunder hammers. Kind of a shame, as that could have been a nice bonus to the squad. Power swords are hardly bad though on a 3 attack model, and he can opt to take a fancy pyre pistol on him, basically a hand flamer with AP-1, but honestly for the 5 points that it costs, I'd rather stick with the heavy bolt pistol. Finally, for every 10 models in the squad, up to 2 initiates can take one of the following, either a pyre blaster for 10 points, essentially a flamer with 15 inch range and AP-1, or a power fist and heavy bolt pistol for an additional 10 points. I do think that while looking quite cool, the pyre blasters are very overcosted at 10 points. At something like 5 or 6 points, they might have been a bit more tempting, but at 10 you're just not getting enough damage output to justify that investment, as half the cost of another initiate. The power fists I'd say are okay, maybe could be good to add a little bit of anti-armour threat to a big squad, just kind of annoying that you can't take it on the sword brother, as he'd be able to have the third attack with it. Otherwise, aside from all the standard Space Marine special rules, there aren't any additional rules on the datasheet. Kind of a shame, it might have been fun to have some sort of re-roll ability for the neophytes, as the normal marine size of the Crusader squad used to have in the previous incarnation last edition. Overall, I must admit that the Crusader squads perhaps aren't the most flexible squads ever. I'd say perhaps the main thing that might draw you to take them is the fact that you can take 20 models all in one unit, which could be pretty powerful for using things like one unit buffs to make them either tougher or fightier. Talking of those buffs, talking of those buffs, as with Space Marines, there's quite a lot to go around. They'll get to shrug off against mortal wounds on a 5+, 
re-roll charges, shock assault and combat doctrines all at base, and then unless you're building an allied list, you'll be able to take Black Templar vows as well. The 5 plus invul from Uphold the Honour of the Emperor certainly seems good, very much so for neophytes with their relatively bad saves, but any of the others at least seem useful. Having Assault Doctrine or Sixes auto wounding all game long is fine, as is the bonus move on turn 1 for a relatively slow assault unit. The Black Templar Litanies of the Devout are pretty nice on these. A 5 plus Feel No Pain is great on an absolutely enormous unit. At 20 models, that's going to be significantly harder to shift. And when they get into melee, the 6s causing Mortal Wounds one. That could be a powerful boost to allow them to punch through some hard targets that can't be handled just by a flurry of chainsaw attacks. There's a good chance that they'd have enough attacks to make it through to get the full 6 Mortal Wounds if they roll well. I think the question isn't really whether or not those buffs will be great on these guys. They absolutely are. It's more the case of whether or not they could be better applied to another unit, maybe, say, Vanguard veterans tooled up with power weapons. Otherwise, the vast majority of the other core character buffs will help. Reroll some captains or lieutenants, or marshals and castellans if you're in Black Templar speak. The standard litanies can give you plus one to wound and rerolls to hit in combat. And if you're running as alongside Hellbrex, they can be plus one strength in the fight phase as well. Jumping up to strength five is really quite a big deal for chainswords. Apothecaries or Grimaldus could help out for Feel No Pains, Apothecaries can do a bit of healing as well, and a couple of the Black Templar's relics can be very useful indeed, potentially the Aurelian Shroud for a turn of 4 plus invul save, or maybe the Crusader Helm for early assault doctrine. I think in terms of handing out units for buffs, slow moving very big melee squads are some of the easiest to put these stacking buffs on, and can get quite a bit out of them. With the Black Templar's relic bearer rules as well, we can also upgrade one of the squad members to carry something interesting. I feel like the ones that increase durability might have a bit more value on units with storm shields, so you can at least have one model that's very tanky with an invul save and that relic, but otherwise the Fist of Balthus could potentially upgrade a power fist to have some serious anti-tank punch. Kind of still a shame that you can't take it on the Sword Brother though. The Holy Orb could hand out some fights last just when you need it, and Sigismund's Seal could be a good source of rerolls, though it's kind of dependent on your squad actually reaching its target, which isn't necessarily guaranteed when they move at least fairly slowly. Finally, if you do take a massive unit, stratagems are generally going to have pretty decent effect on them, in particular transhuman physiology to shrug off a bunch of heavy firepower, though you would normally be paying two command points while the squad's at normal strength. Gene Raw Might to auto-wound on sixes would certainly allow those chainsaws to punch off against heavier targets, and that's not too bad value for one command point when you're swinging with so many attacks. The Black Templar ones, such as Devout Push, could be good for getting to objectives, Vicious Repost if a whole bunch of them are going to die in melee, or Tenacious Assault to stop enemies falling back quite as much. And he could potentially make the Sword Brethren a little bit scarier with Air of Sigismund, though it might be a bit nicer on a sergeant that you could say combined with that Fist of Balthus. Finally, for 1 CP, you can make any shotguns that you take in the unit damage to. I guess situationally useful if you are taking a whole bunch of them, but I don't think it's quite strong enough a stratagem to really build around and aim to use. As is quite often with marine stratagems, transhuman physiology does seem to be one of the best, the others may be a touch more situational. I think in general if I were using these guys though, I would invest in some decent character support, potentially the combination of Helbrecht and Grimaldus does seem like quite a nice all-rounder, massively more dangerous in combat, and Grimaldus can help out a bit with his feel no pain for durability as well. Talking of toughness, it is interesting to see just how hard to remove we could make a squad if we build it up to the maximum toughness. So here we have a 20 strong squad for 361 points base. Combined with a Templar Bow for a 5 plus invul save and 2s to wound will always fail to wound. Then a helpful chaplain nearby to give them a 5 plus feel no pain listening, plus maybe a melee damage buff of some kind. All these combined to make the squad really quite tough to shift. To bring them down you'll need around about 216 bolt rifle hits. 81 heavy bolter hits, or 68 plasma gun hits. It's kind of interesting that the plasma gun's not all that much more effective than the heavy bolter. The invul save and the pseudo transhuman of the vow really make them quite a lot tougher against the things that are usually best at killing marines. I guess you could make these numbers even better as well if you did decide to use transhuman physiology. It could be 2 CP well spent if you're about to get targeted by a bunch of stuff. Sorry, I've realised I have got the mortal wound stats slightly wrong on that. It should be 60 rather than 30 as they have 40 wounds base plus their feel no pain. Kind of a little bit depressingly though for this durability experiment, I did run the numbers on Vanguard veterans for comparison. If you take squads of them with Storm Shield, Jump Pack and Lightning Claw, the durability numbers do come out to be fairly similar with the same buffs applied, at least on a per point basis. 
These guys are far better at soaking up mortal wounds, but I think it's maybe not the best news for a squad if they're going to be a similar sort of durability to a much faster and more dangerous squad that's a lot more mobile jumping around the battlefield. In any case though, how might be a good idea to use the Primaris Crusader squad in-game? I think for me I could happily run squads either both of 20 or of 10-man squads. In general with their slowish movement, I think they want to start fairly front and centrally, head towards a midfield objective, and engage any enemy light infantry on the way. I still think that perhaps the most unique thing about them is the truly enormous big unit for one unit buffs, and if I was taking them like this, I most certainly want to run some nice support characters alongside. A 5 plus fill no pain from the litany could certainly be handy to shift with so many bodies, and just having so much space marine might in one unit should make them pretty intimidating to try and charge. Gene wrought might or that mortal wound litany might allow them to punch up against some harder targets. If I'm honest, I don't think that these are going to be some of the more competitive choices for Black Templars, and are largely going to be used more in fun and fluffy lists as opposed to appearing in tournaments or things. 10-man squads just tend to be a bit too expensive for holding backfield objectives, that's probably best left to things like minimum sized units of intercessors and things. So really they'd be competing against the units that are moving forward, things like blade guard veterans, vanguard veterans and assault terminators. Unfortunately I think against most targets pretty much any of these will do a fair bit more damage for the points, and due to the storm shields they do tend to have a very similar durability. I guess perhaps the main advantage that they have over these type of units is obsec and a ton of bodies, so it would mean that you'd be able to hold down the midfield objectives fairly well. But just on the raw numbers, it really doesn't seem like good news at all. Fairly similarly durable, but in general not quite as fighty, unless you're just fighting light infantry. So overall, maybe not the best news for the Crusaders squad competitively, but I'm sure plenty of people will still be keen to try them out. Nice shiny new models with a fun new codex. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, would you agree with my analysis, or do you think that there's other niches that they might be able to tap a bit better? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, including hopefully a fair bit more for the Black Templars. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I'd just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and it's what allows me to keep these videos coming quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.